Today we're talking about The Emperor 2 by Epiphone. Yes, it's the Joe Pass guitar. Let's do this. Jazz boxes are dead. No one plays jazz anymore, comparatively to what we did back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, but jazz is still alive. However, the guitars are not. Gibson stopped making arch tops, jazz style guitars a long time ago, and now we only have the remnants of a long and forgotten age. You can still get new arch tops now and then, okay? You can go to a custom luthier, but if you want to find something classic like an L5 or a Super 400 or a 350, you're gonna have a hard time. They don't sell them anymore, they've stopped making them for a long time, and now you have to go to vintage dealers exclusively to buy these sometimes ten to $15,000 instruments. But that is where I come in. I introduce to you the Epiphone, Emperor 2. Now before you get all mad at me and say that it's not a real jazz guitar, hear me out, okay? So Joe Pass, prolific, virtuosic guitar player, right? Incredible. If you ever want to hear Joe Pass, listen to his Virtuoso record. It is so great. So anyway, Joe Pass started playing on a Gibson ES-175. I would love a 175D, personally. That is a dream guitar, but... The 50s and the 60s models are probably going to be close to you know, eight to nine grand. Okay, depending on whether it has a actual vintage PAF or it's just a you know restock or a fake one. Okay, so Joe Pass plays 175. He gets to deal with Ibanez in the 80s, right? The Ibanez JP20, I believe. It's one of Joe Pass's guitars. It's a little different than most jazz boxes because the pickup in it is actually shifted more forward on the body, right? It's not as far back as a traditional jazz pickup would be. Typically, jazz pickups are only used in the neck position with the tone rolled down significantly, right? So you get that very muffled, high-passed jazz sound. So the JP-20 happened for a while, and then after the JP-20 came the Epiphone Emperor 2. The Epiphone Emperor is Joe Pass's budget option into the jazz guitar world and it was made in Korea at first and then moved to China Chinese manufacturing the Emperor was released in 1994 right when Joe Pass passed away and then in 2015 it was discontinued but you can still find them today they're a fantastic value and they get you the jazz sounds you crave so the Epiphone Emperor 2 is similar to an ES-175 let me show you what they've done with it all right, so first off, we've got gold-plated hardware, a multiple bound body. We have a bound neck, we have bound F-holes, and a bound peg head. We have a laminated spruce top. We have a maple laminate with a figured maple veneer. So what you see here on the back of the guitar is that figured maple veneer. We have a raised pickguard, and some of the Joe Pass guitars had his actual signature on it. And then we have a Gibson Birdland style tailpiece with a solid rosewood floating bridge. Now this finish is a natural finish, but they also came in vintage sunburst, cherry sunburst, and wine red. Now you can get a Joe Pass Emperor 2 pretty cheap on the used market. I found mine on Facebook Marketplace for about $400. Now they'll range from $400 to $700. And this one is going to be more of a early 2000s emperor. It's going to be a Korean made one, which I feel like is more ideal than a Chinese made emperor too. But it also feels just great in the hands. It plays really well. It feels like a jazz box that's dumbed down for those of us who don't want to invest in a 15 grand vintage one. Let's go on to playing the guitar and see how it sounds. So this Emperor 2 certainly has the jazz sound that you all need if you want to get a more traditional jazz sound while you're learning jazz. Would I take this out in a gig? I think I would. 
I'm obviously playing flat wounds on this. 12 gauge, they're thick, they're heavy. But I feel like I can hold my own at a gig playing this kind of guitar. I might get some looks. It's not a real Gibson, per se. But at the same time, why take yourself so seriously? It's music. The Epiphone Emperor 2, Joe Pass, is an excellent guitar and certainly worthy of Joe Pass's name. It's a fun guitar. I recommend you pick one up for yourself. Quintessential hollow body, jazz-like sounds. You're going to regret not getting one because the hollow body sounds are great on this instrument. Pickup sound great. Neck feels great. Strings sound great. You're going to want to get one, guys. Trust me on this. Do you guys have an off-brand or a big three-brand jazz-style hollow body that you play for your jazz gigs? Or maybe you just want a hollow body for its particular sound, the way it voices different things. I want to know why you're using them, what you are using them for, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next time on our next episode of iGuitar. Guitar.